Okay, so this talk started yesterday at, at another talk about uh, Julia and, and Klaus, and I think I, I heard something in the spirit of uh, Lisp was slower than Julia because of Klaus, which made me already uh, quite angry. <laughs> and then Luke stood up and said, you know this, this Julia model of calling functions, it's, it's so novel and groundbreaking and, and all that, and, and so modern and... And that was the point where I said, okay, hold my beer. Um, so, so I started yesterday, mostly after the pub, um, to write um, a new kind of generic functions, called Julia functions, and they are on GitHub. Um, let me just, um, yeah, load that first. So it's not yet on Quickness because I just finished it half an hour ago. Okay, so what's happening? So I have here a function called lispsum. And, and a, a function called Julia sum. Those are generic functions, and all they do is they sum the contents of a vector. And that's really all the code I'm going to show. So please pay attention. It's kind of, so. So you have those functions for summing all the elements in the vector, and I also supply an initial value to make it a little less boring. So we have multiple dispatch. So when I write a Lisp sum of a vector, and an initial value of zero, you see. Um, I added a, a before method that says I'm calling this because if you don't use before or after around, it's kind of boring too. So this is the Lisp sum. I can supply another initial value. So you believe me that it's actually doing what it should. And the Julia sum function is doing the same. So, so far, nothing special. Two methods per generic function. And the only difference between two is, is here the generic function clause of the Julia sum and, and I use here a reader macro to make sure that the, the function that does the actual work is really the very same implementation in both cases. And then I wrote a benchmark function that creates a vector of 10 million double floats in a, and, and then runs the, the sum function 10 times and checks whether it's correct. And this is still the range for a double float. Arithmetic works as it should. So when I write benchmark and I want to benchmark the Lisp sum function, so that happens. So you call it 10 times. The total execution time is 1.4 seconds. And it happily prints each time, OK, I'm calling the Lisp sum function. It sums up all those numbers in the vector. And so the Julia sum function, um, all it does different is that within each method, it, it doesn't just, uh, so, so regularly you stay relatively generic. So you use it, would use a generic plus and all that. And in the Julia version, it just specializes it aggressively down to the very last type. So the, the difference is actually quite quite uh, enormous if you do that. And so so you get more than a factor of 10 speed up. And so so this is the 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 Julia generic function, I guess you can now use it's on GitHub. And it, it also gets um, better than that. So um, because now you could say, okay, this is a 10 million elements vector or something. Maybe the dispatch overhead is, is really, really large. So, so I'm cheating somewhere or something. So I wrote the same benchmark, but I don't supply the function as a, as a higher order object. But I, I hard coded here that Julia sum function. And then I can call the Julia benchmark. So it's the very same thing as before, except that, that I hard code the function call. And it's even a bit faster because now the dispatch overhead is, is entirely zero. And I can even show you the, the assembler instructions of the Julia benchmark code to illustrate the point that. So uh, there is one assembler floating point instruction uh, in here. So this is the innermost loop that's being generated. So as you can see, the generic function has been inlined. And, and now you may say, OK, but Marco was cheating with those before and, and after methods or something, or, or using some, some hard-coded stuff. Um, so you can say, Julia, some go brrrt. And um, now let me rerun this benchmark. And, and you see, so before, after, and round methods still work. And I think that's pretty cool. So that's kind of nice to have. And it's now on now GitHub. Um, and maybe if you have questions or, or you think I did any shortcuts because I only started yesterday night or something, 
Um, that's not the case. So it actually handles method combinations. Otherwise, DD wouldn't hold my mic and all that. So, so um, you have seen the the inline assembler instructions. Now let me show you how the how the function that's being generated actually looks like. So it's this, and it gets folded down by SPCL to this tiny loop nest. So it handles call next method with and without arguments, um, next method p and so forth. So that's pretty cool. And that's about it. Thank you. So a question. This is. You didn't mention it, but this is, I'm assuming, predicated on inline generic functions. And does the Lisp sum is, okay, so is the Lisp sum also inline, or is it only Julia sums? No, Lisp sum is, is a regular standard generic function. No no tricks, no anything. It doesn't also depend on, on the, the inline generic function. This is a new library. I just copied a lot of the old code. But it, but it does use inline as part of the implementation. Um, but only in case, so, so it is in line, but only in case you can statically show that it's exactly one of those effective methods that answers the question. I have one. And another question. Yeah, what, what kind of beer have you had yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the pub was the polder over there, and I think it was something with Jay, who, who recalls that, to, 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 uh, something like Julia. It sounded a little bit like Julia, but I forgot. <laughs> okay, thanks.